Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your uh, time zone. I'm Yuri Basilevs from Brown University, and it's my great pleasure to introduce our SPL speaker, Alessandro Reale from the University of Pavia. Alessandro is many things, and he wears many hats. He is a professor of solids and structures. He is the Dean of Civil Engineering and Architecture. He is the Rector's Delegate for International Research. He is an ambassador of the TU Munich. He is a Clarivate Analytics highly cited researcher. He is a recipient of every mechanics related Young Investigator Award a European researcher is eligible for. He is an IACM and Hans Fischer Fellow. He is a Knight Commander, as they say in Italy, Commendatore of the uh, Order of Merit of the Italian Republic. And most recently, he's the ECMS Euler uh, medalist. Who? that's quite a list especially given Ali's relatively young age. Oh, and I forget, he is also a wonderful father, a husband, and I believe a dog owner. However, more importantly to me, okay, besides being a brilliant IGA researcher, Ali is a great friend whom I've known since graduate school. Our friendship began in the early days of the IGA research in the Tom Hughes group at UT Austin. Tom Hughes uh, spoke about that in his uh, um, history talk earlier today, and our friendship continues until present day. I've taken many trips to Pavia, where among Ale and his people, I always felt like being part of the family. Thank you for that, and I miss those terribly. Hopefully we can uh, start traveling soon again. So today I look forward to hearing Ale's presentation titled Some Recent Advances in IGA. And for the audience, okay, if you have a question uh, for Ale, use the Ask Alessandro Reale tab on the left of the sidebar of the platform. Okay, not the full screen, but of the platform. Um, I will, and time permitting, I'll read your questions out loud at the end of the presentation. Ale, the floor is all yours. Well, uh, Yuri, or should I say Mr. President, uh, uh, thank you very much for this kind of introduction and in particular for your friendship. This really is the most important thing between the two of us, and I'm really grateful for this. And it was clear from what you said. I, since we are virtual in the US, I decided not to begin mentioning the wonderful performance of Italy at the Euro Cup. And I just thank Yuri for his presentation. I want to thank the chairs of this conference for this invitation. It is a, a big honor for me. And uh, Arif, uh, Wing, Krishna, thank you very much. And I would like also to thank the honorary co-chairs, uh, Tom, Bob, and Tisley for being such an amazing example for people like me and I think for all my generation and for, for all the computational mechanics community. And uh, with this, uh, I can start with my presentation. Uh, it's, uh, you know, before me, there was the fantastic talk by Tom and uh, I'm going to, to show some recent advances in geometric analysis. That is something that was started back uh, in 2004, working with Yuri, with Austin Cottrell and other friends at Tom's chair. But before that, uh, you know, we are virtually in the US, but I'm in Pavia, unfortunately. I would love to be there. And so welcome to the University of Pavia. Yuri has been here many times. I hope that you will have an occasion to visit us. It's a university full of history and full of great people. As you see here, some, some of the big names that uh, were professors in Pavia. You see Nobel Prizes, you see a lot of historical names. You see also the Franco Brezzi, that is, uh, you know, was the first professors, the first professor I met at the University of Pavia and uh, had a deep influence uh, on my career. He was the one convincing me to pursue a PhD and uh, he introduced me to Tom Hughes that is also part of the University of Pavia since uh, he has got an honorary doctorate and is uh, formally part of the faculty uh, of engineering at the University of Pavia. And all of these connections are important for me because uh, they really led me to start working on isogeometric analysis when uh, in 2004, I spent time in Austin. Here you see a picture of those times. You see here you have, we have our USACM president, Yuri, and a lot of other friends around. And Tom, during his lecture, mentioned that he used to work in cafes with Bob Taylor, 
That was true also in the early times of IGA. We were working, uh, writing on napkins, and that was an amazing time. And uh, I would say that the great science, strong friendships, and good wine were the, the basis, together with coffee, of course, for developing uh, isogeometric analysis. But uh, I don't want to spend too much time introducing IGA. Tom uh, did that before me. Uh, I just want to mention that it was started uh, in 2003, 2004. I was lucky enough to be there at the beginning by Tom Hughes, uh, Yuri Basilev, and Austin Cottrell, all great friends. And, uh, you know, you can see IGA as an alternative to standard finite element analysis based on CAD basis functions like splines, NURBS, and uh, that includes uh, isoparametric finite element analysis as a special case, but offers a lot of other possibilities, and in particular, precise and efficient geometric modeling, uh, smooth basis function with compact support, and this smoothness is what is uh, very important to me and for, and for what I'm going to show you later on, simplified mesh refinement, superior approximation properties, and integration of design and analysis that is the ultimate goal of IGA, and now I can say that uh, there were there are amazing results in this direction. But uh, what I'm going to show you in this presentation mainly is what you can get thanks to the smoothness of this basis function, and in particular for what concerns structural simulation, that is my main topic. Uh, and here I just mentioned the, the fact that IGA gave new life to structural simulations allowing the implementation in primal form of models requiring higher order continuity, like Kirchhoff log, log plates and shells. And here I would like to mention the amazing work of Joseph Kindle during his PhD with Kai Blatzinger and later on. He spent a lot of time in Pavia, he's a great friend, a great researcher, and got very important results. Before going on, I just want to give a little bit of motivation with some old slides, but I think those are old but gold and uh, showing what you can gain through IGA. And here I'm showing a few results about the demanding nonlinear explicit dynamics problem involving contact. That is the structural analysis, so just the structural closure and opening of aortic valve. And uh, I skip uh, the, the part where we discuss uh, the creation of geometry, something that can be done in a nice way using nerves. But, you know, once you get to this multi-patch nerve patient-specific geometry that is not very difficult to obtain, then the good point is that now, now but already, you know, when we did this, that was uh, some, some years ago, 2015, I think, you could directly give this to LSDINA and uh, directly run analysis in LSDINA. This is very important because IGA is one of those techniques uh, that made it to the commercial codes and uh, LSDINA was the first one uh, that, it, that was allowing to run analysis with, uh, with IGA. And for example, uh, we were able to run this problem and to do some comparison between IGA and finite element analysis. In particular, of course, uh, with IGA, we can go easily higher order with higher continuity. In this case, I'm showing you some results using quadratic C1 shells to be compared with results, uh, in this case, with the Belichko Shai super fast uh, Reisner Mindling shell in LSDINA. The point is, uh, it's clear that going higher order, high continuity, you can run coarser analysis giving the same accuracy. And this is the case, you see. With 700 nodes, 800 nodes, you got uh, the same results in terms of here displacements, but also stresses and so on. Uh, got with uh, finite element meshes that are 200 times uh, uh, finer. The point is computational cost. And here you see that you got a super big speed up. Of course, this 400 times is 40 times uh, due to the, uh, to the, to the coarser mesh and uh, 10 times because uh, the fact that we are using coarser mesh and the good spectral property of IGA allows us to get uh, time steps that are much bigger, 10 times in this case. But this is a very good result that really convinced us, and we published this paper in 2015, convinced a lot of people that IGA can be really a, a good alternative to finite elements for getting uh, 
complex uh, explicit dynamics problems uh, solved uh, in a very fast way. But then uh, we wanted to move uh, a step forward. And so we, I'm, I'm here to show some results about FSI simulation of aortic valves. First of all, here I want to say that this is a collaboration with a lot of friends, but the main guy behind these results is Min Chen Su, my friend at Iowa State University. And uh, solving this kind of problems involves a lot of challenges, team structures, fast dynamics, large deformation, turbulent flows, uh, contact, impact, uh, FSI, a lot, of, a lot of problems potentially. And those were in, in big part bypassed by the fact that uh, by the big properties of IGA on the structural side and uh, the fact that uh, you can even, you can solve very nicely this kind of problems by means of uh, immersed isogeometric methods. And here, as Tom said, we need to go a little bit back to the work by Ernst Rank, Alexander Duster and uh, uh, other collaborators that proved that uh, immersed methods work very nicely with higher order finite elements, the finite cell method. Here I'm showing just, uh, this is a fictitious domain method basically using higher order function. And the results are amazing. Uh, this guy's a tomb could solve very complex problems, really showing the fact that immersed methods are a way to go when you deal with very complex geometries and you want to avoid remeshing and other things that you need to do to go for when solving, for example, phase dynamics in, uh, in, in FSI problems. Here I'm just mentioning some works that I did in, in collaboration with the guys at TUM and in particular, David D'Angela uh, performed the simulations and uh, Luca Corradello or some work in collaboration with the group of, Clem of uh, Harald van Brummelen and Clemens Verusel at, uh, in Eindhoven. You know, the point is going immersed is really a very nice way to deal with these complex problems. This was picked up very nicely by Min Chen Su in collaboration also with Yuri, with Tom and, uh, and other IGA people and move this to the IGA world and uh, giving life to the so-called immersive geometric analysis. And the aortic valve FSI simulation is a clear example. Here you, you see a, a nice video of a, of a prosthetic aortic valve uh, uh, via immersive geometric analysis. And the results are very nice. And at the time when this paper was published, this was really the, the state of the art of, uh, of this kind of simulations. But uh, we tried to move also, sorry, we tried to move also towards patient-specific uh, simulations, trying to put together the kind of structural simulation I, I did show you at the beginning, the closure of the valve, putting also the blood flow. And uh, this was performed thanks to the collaboration between Pavia for the structural part, and in particular, again, Min Chen Su, his group, and the friends that I mentioned before. And uh, at the end of the day, this is the patient-specific simulations we were able to run. Of course, this is a super nice video. It's, uh, you, you can wonder if it's just uh, a movie, a cartoon, or if, if these results can be somewhat validated. Of course, it's very difficult to validate them. And there are a lot of hypotheses about you know, the material, the, the kind, uh, the, the, the fluid, about inflow, outflow, a lot of hypotheses. But uh, we did some validation comparing the results with phase uh, constant MRI. And as you may see here, on the left side, you get some snapshots at a certain cut of, uh, of this valve to see the flow. And on the right, you see the MRI results. Of course, these are smoother because those are uh, averages. But you can see that, uh, the, at least from the qualitative point of view, the most important uh, characteristics of the flow are, are cached very well. This was astonishing, even better than we were expecting. And this was considered very important by medical doctors we collaborate with and convince them to try to go this way. So I immersed IGA seems to be really the way to go for this kind of simulations. But of course, uh, you can then you want to improve. It's not only 
explicit, I have shown you some explicit dynamics, but also implicit dynamics uh, works very well with IGA. And uh, then you want to include in this uh, shell analysis uh, also general hyperelastic materials. And this is this work by Josef Kindle, mainly in collaboration again with Min Chen Su, that allowed us to extend our results to general hyperelastic shells. And this was important also for the valve simulation that I've shown you before. Speaking about shells, we also were trying to go from cut to analysis seamlessly. I'm showing you a few, few slides from uh, uh, a collaboration again with TUM, Luca Corradello and David Angelli in particular and the group of Ernst Rank. And you can see that going uh, thanks to immerse methods, you can directly start from the CAD model of something like this with a lot of trim curves. This is the, the roof, a CAD model of the roof of the Rolex Center at the PFL Luzen, and directly get analysis and seamlessly get, get the results. You do this through immersed methods using, in this case, hierarchical uh, B splines. Similar results and very nice techniques are developed also. Again, at tomb, but the group of Kai Bletzinger, the Ibra method is, uh, is something worth mentioning. But then you can include, uh, I just want to convince you that IGA is very good for structural simulations and uh, in collaboration with uh, people uh, from uh, the University of Calabria, in particular, Leonardo Leonetti, we are able to include also complex phenomena like backing, snap back, snap through, uh, multi-patch analysis, always getting extremely good, extremely accurate results at a very relatively at a very low cost. You can include also fracture with in shells, and I just want to call, to mention the collaboration with the group of Laura De Lorenzi and Dr. Gomez, and in particular, I want to mention here again Joseph Kindle and uh, Maredi Ambati. Uh, including phase field description of, vit or of brittle fracture in plates and shells. And I suggest you to take a look at this paper because I think it's very good. So, isogeometric analysis is very successful for the simulation of any kind of structural models. I've shown you mainly results about uh, Kirchhoff love shells, but there are very nice results also uh, with Mindrian Reisner shells. And here I would mention mainly the work by. Uh, Dave Benson, Blended Shells, that is a very interesting paper by Dave Benson in collaboration again with Yuri and Tom and other people, where Kirchhoff shells and Reisner mini shells are blended in a formulation such that when you can activate rotational degrees of freedom when you need them, for example, for boundary conditions or for other reasons, and using Kirchhoff law shells when the structure is, uh, is very thin or you don't need uh, uh, rotation boundary, uh, rotation degrees of freedom, but also IGA is giving very nice results for solid shells. And I want to mention a new family of formulations based on non-classical variable. And in particular here, I want to mention the work at the chair of Manfred Bischoff, uh, where they developed shear flexible shells without rotational degrees of freedom. And this is very interesting work. So the high continuity of IGA really opened the door for novel formulation and uh, for really realizing classical formulation like Kirchhoff Law Shells with very, very uh, nice results. And this is true also in the framework of IGA collocation, that means solving the equation directly in strong form. I don't have the time to go through IGA collocation here, but I will show a few results later on. So, now I, I want to focus, uh, so, so far was, uh, you know, in a, an overview of some results. Now I want to focus on uh, an application that I like very much that I developed over the last couple of years with some friends in Pavia uh, about using IGA for simulating laminates uh, in an efficient way, at least from uh, elastic, at least for elastic analysis. Of course, you all know that for laminates, it's very important to that the main uh, failure mechanism is the lamination. So it's very important to be able to uh, simulate well, to uh, catch well the out-of-plane stresses, in particular shear stresses. All these results uh, came, that I'm going to show, came from a discussion with uh, some collaborators from Hutchinson that were proposing us to use IGA 
And in particular, they wanted to use uh, IgA with very few elements, possibly one through the thickness, to get uh, uh, accurate results uh, for out-of-plane stresses. The point is that, uh, from my point of view, this was not a good idea because, of course, if you use a high-order, high-continuity description of the displacements uh, through, with, through the thickness with just one element, so high continuity is not really helping there, because, of course, uh, high continuity in displacements uh, implies high continuity in strains. And if the strains are continuous and you have jumping uh, materials coefficients, uh, you know, you get these continuous stresses. But uh, by equilibrium, shear stresses are continuous. So there is something that uh, cannot work there. And this is the reason why uh, what is there in the literature are mainly with IGA layer wise approaches. Me that means that uh, every layer is described with an azure geometric element with C0 continuity across the layers. That is exactly what you want. And this is very good if you want to have accurate displacements, accurate in-plane stresses, accurate out-of-plane stresses. Unfortunately, this is very expensive, in particular when you have a high number of layers. And the people from Hutchinson that we were discussing with wanted to simulate uh, a lot of layers possibly with only very few, possibly one element through a thickness. If you use only one element through a thickness here is what I was saying before. You use a single element here, you get accurate displacements, accurate in-plane stresses that are discontinuous, but inaccurate out-of-plane stresses. But the analysis is inexpensive. The problem is that if the out-of-plane stresses are not accurate, this is not good for laminates. Here is uh, an example you see on, uh, this is a uh, 11 layers, uh, a very simple play. This is the Pagano example, the very well-known Pagano example. And you see that the sigma 1, 1 in-plane component is discontinuous and you get the analytical solution is the one in blue. The crosses are a layer wise, so one element per layer. And with just one single element, you get the red dots. You see the approximation is very nice. What happens if we want to see, for example, sigma 1, 3, an out of plane component, a shear component is very important. You get this. Layer wise is very accurate, but very expensive. Instead, inexpensive, but absolutely not accurate and not useful, the simulation using the single element approach. So, what was the idea? The idea was trying to recover an accurate out of plane stress state from equilibrium at locations of interest. Of course, so start from equilibrium. You write the equations of equilibrium uh, in this way, and you look at this. Here, you have some components, sigma 1, 1 and sigma 1, 2, that are in plane components that are very well approximated by our formulation. And not only this, we have a higher continuity. That means that also not only we get good displacement, but also good in-plane stresses and also good derivatives of the in-plane stresses. So all of, all of this is good for us. This is a datum. We can recover sigma 1, 3, and then just integrate through the thickness to, to get sigma 1, 3. Of course, uh, we were hoping to be accurate enough. We were already planning to try to improve the accuracy, and then you can apply this also to the third equation to get the sigma 3. Astonishingly enough, of course, this can be rewritten in this way, integrating through the thickness. To do this, we need two characteristics, an accurate in-plane solution, even with coarse mesh, and high order continuity of the displacement field. These are something that is guaranteed by IGA. So we are thinking IGA is very good to directly do this uh, stress recovery. And this is an inexpensive post-processing operation. As I told you, we were expecting good results, but not this good. We, this was astonishing for us. These are different points of the plate. And you see that sigma 1, 3 is recovered very well. We published this paper a couple of years ago. And this is true for all out of plane components, sigma 2, 3, but even sigma 2, 3. You see, the crosses are our approximation, and the continuous line is the identical solution. Mm -hmm. This was very good. We were super happy of this. And then we started trying to extend this, and we extended this to isogeometric collocation. So this is a reconstruction in strong form. 
of the of equilibrium and we said why don't we even solve the pde the original pde in strong form and the results were very good also in this case then we moved to kirchhoff plates so and also for kirchhoff plates uh, we were able to find very good results with work galerkin and collocation and then we moved to curved 3d shells and again for both galerkin and collocation we published the paper where the results are extremely good of course we are working on more extensions like uh, uh, we still have to go for Kirchhoff love shells uh, or and for uh, and then we want to move to inelastic uh, so for geometrically in, uh, for material nonlinear and also for geometrical nonlinear situations but this is still work to be done now I want to show still talking about uh, shells I want to mention the fact that uh, I've shown you some FSI results. We were coupling IGA with IGA in an immerse framework, but we did also other coupling and uh, isogeometric shells uh, seem to be very robust for uh, FSI independent, independent on what we coupled them with. For example, in this paper, we coupled the uh, IGA Kirchhoff law shells to boundary elements in an isogeometric version of boundary element in collaboration with Luca Eltai and, uh, and Joseph Kindle. This is a collaboration between the University of Pavia and Sissa in Trieste, with the idea of having a fully isogeometric FSI in the sense that if you couple with boundary element, the geometry is just the surface. So directly the CAD model is really describing both the structure and also the fluid because uh, that's all what you need for, uh, for boundary element. Of course, this is limited to viscous flow in this case. Uh, and this is ideal for FSI problems with structures immersed in very large fluid domains like falling objects, because in this way you have just this mesh. And for example, here you see a cup that falls for several meters and the mesh is super coarse. We got some very nice results, but then we moved also to other kind of coupling. And we tried to couple IGA also with, I know that Yuri has a lot of work coupling IGA for structure and finite element for fluids. Here we coupled with uh, IGA with finite difference immersed methods. And again, the results were extremely good. Here I have to mention the collaboration with Marco De Tullio from Bari and his PhD student, Alessandro Nitti. The results were extremely good also in this case, and this is really proving how IGA is a very good method for structures, uh, very good also for coupling with other techniques uh, to, to do FSI or other things. In Pavia, we are working a lot, in particular, my good friend Ferdinand Auricchio is working a lot in the field of editing manufacturing. And so we started doing this also with IGA, both trying to simulate uh, the objects to be printed and to simulate the process of printing. Here, I want to mention the collaboration with the group of Marcus Kessner for topology optimization for additive manufacturing applications via adaptive IGA using phase field modeling. And uh, again, I want to highlight the fact that uh, IGA is uh, a very good framework for phase field modeling of many things from Canilliard, that was the first application proposed by Hector Gomez when he was visiting Austin in those uh, years, uh, something like 15 years ago when we were a big group in Austin, but then moving to many other things. I've shown you some results of fracture here to project optimization. I will show you something later about phase field modeling. IGA is a perfect environment for this. And then, uh, we, we started trying to simulate uh, selected laser melting, uh, editing manufacturing processes. And to do this, uh, we, we needed to have a, a nice way of uh, developing multi-level adaptive high order simulation and uh, a way to define admissible grid that we are providing us stable and accurate results. And here we got a big help uh, from a collaboration with Carlotta Giannelli and Rafael Vasquez. And these are some results. And then what's next? We want to go towards IGI fidelity adaptive thermomechanical simulation for 
SLM additive manufacturing. And we are going uh, in that direction. We have uh, a postdoc, a very good postdoc, Massimo Carraturo, that is working in that direction in collaboration with, uh, uh, with the chair of Ernst Rank at TUM. These are FCM simulations. Now we are trying to go towards isogeometric high fidelity simulations. Uh, another, another application that I want to show you is uh, electromechanical, uh, a, an electromechanical key, uh, Kirchhoff-Love shell. Uh, we started this collaboration again with the group of uh, Marco De Tullio and Alessandro, Nitti, and Alessandro Nitti. And uh, we are getting very nice results in coupling the Kirchhoff-Love shell formulation with, uh, electro uh, with electromechanical uh, models with the idea of going towards the study of, uh, of the heart. And uh, here I'm showing you a few simulations. This is an active stream implementation. What I want to mention here is that we are working now in Pavia in collaboration with, uh, I have a PhD student, Michele Torre, and the collaborator uh, that, is, that comes from biomechanics, Francesco Pasqualini, that got an ERC grant recently to work uh, on, uh, on tissue engineering. And uh, we found out, and this is a work in preparation, that isogeometric collocation is a very good framework for developing electrophysiology. And uh, I, I hope to be able to show you res the, the results of this work uh, at next uh, USNCCM or even before that. I'm very happy with the results. And again, uh, IGA has shown to be very good for solving coupled problems like this. Uh, one of the last problems uh, I'm going to show you uh, is uh, the fact that IGA is very good for solving coupled problems beyond FSI and uh, in particular coupled with phase field modeling. Here, I'm, uh, I'm going to show you a collaboration with some friends from Polytechnic of Milano to simulate ferroelectric materials. In this device, since these devices show a macroscopic nonlinear behavior for high electric fields and the microstructural evolution in the ferroelectric material is the origin of nonlinearity, we, uh, we thought that uh, we could, and the polarization plays a key role, we thought that we should have used uh, we could have used the IGA for solving this problem with coarse meshes, uh, taking advantage of the big flexibility and the very nice results that IGA grants for nonlinear problems, using the phase field method for uh, solving uh, the polarization, for approximating the polarization, that in this case is a vector field. So these are, this is the, the free energy. You see, we have uh, several parts here. We have the, the standard lambda energy, a gradient energy. This uh, P is the polarization, that is a vector. And then we have the mechanical energy and the electrical energy. Uh, this was classically solved uh, with, um, with standard finite elements uh, in, uh, in a Galerkin formulation. Our idea is to do isogeometric collocation for this. Why? Because uh, um, solving directly in strong form makes uh, this, uh, allows us to avoid integration and uh, the cost of integration is very important when you have problems like this. And here we used for the evolution and explicit integration and isogeometric collocation allows you to save a lot in particular when uh, you avoid to compute the integrals, and this is very important when you go for explicit uh, time integration, because in that case, the most of the cost is evaluation. And here you save a lot evaluating the equations only at few points instead of at a ton of, uh, of Gauss points. So these are the results. This is a paper that we published a couple of uh, two years ago on CMME. And uh, you see that this is uh, the evolution of the two, this is a plain stem problem. And you see the evolution of the polarization in the, of the two components of the polarization using a geometric collocation. And this is the reference results at the end of the evolution computed with a finite element code that as you see is, uh, 
this is an overkill mesh. Actually, this is not overkill. This is the finest mesh we needed to get stable results. And you see that we got exactly the same results with a much coarser mesh and in, a, in an amount of time that is much lower. In principle, I have to say that this comparison is not, I cannot say anything about the computational time because this was done in MATLAB and this was done in Fortran. But I can tell you that the mesh was much coarser and all the process was much simpler to code. These are the other components of the displacements at the end of the evolution and the electrical potential. And you see that we got very good and very re uh, reliable results. Again, proving that IGA is a very good method for couple problems and in particular, and also uh, isogeometric collocation. So not only the, the, the Galerk version of IGA, but also the strong form version is very good. Strong form that we can directly solve within uh, a, an isoparametric method because of the continuity of IGA. And this uh, leads to uh, the last uh, point that, uh, that I want to discuss with you, that is uh, uh, tumor growth. Uh, this slide is not from me. This slide is describing the work that was developed uh, mainly by Guillermo Lorenzo, uh, that, that, use, uh, that was a PhD student uh, at the chair of Hector Gomez when Hector Gomez was uh, in, uh, in Spain, in La Coruña, within his uh, ERC project. It was uh, a project on tumor growth. And uh, what Guillermo did was to de was developing a phase field modeling uh, framework for tumor growth using IGA based on hierarchical bisplines. Uh, this is a collaboration developed also with Tom, with Mike Scott, with a lot of people. And uh, they, they were able to get uh, very good results. They published this also on PNAS for simulating the growth of, uh, of tumors. In this case, it's prostate cancer. And uh, these results are very good and really got a lot of interest also from doctors. Then uh, what happened is that uh, Guillermo came to Pavia for the postdoc and started working with me, and then looked natural to start uh, coupling this with mechanics, since I'm a professor of, uh, of mechanics. Uh, why we started doing this? Because there was some evidence in the medical literature about the fact that in uh, larger prostates, for example, larger prostates due to BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, it is very well known to be a problem of male people uh, after a certain age. In larger prostates, it was observed that when a tumor was present, its growth was not as fast and as dangerous as in prostates that were not affected by BPH, that were smaller. Uh, there was no interpretation for this, and we tried to give a mechanical interpretation of this, thinking that uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this growth, this reduced growth, was due to the, to the stresses that are applied by, by the fact that the prostate uh, is bigger. And uh, so we developed a mathematical model for this. Again, I want to say that the most of the credit goes to Guillermo Lorenzo, that is now uh, working uh, with me, Hector, Tom Hughes, and Tom Yankilo within a, a Marie Curie uh, Global Fellowship project. And uh, so we, we tried to couple the, the very nice model that I've shown you before, this one, of, uh, of phase field modeling of tumor growth with elasticity to see if our uh, hypothesis was confirmed by our simulation. The fact that in larger prostate, prostate affected by BPH, the growth of the tumor was reduced. These are the results you see. On the left, you see the growth of the tumor when you do not activate the, the coupling, the mechanical coupling. So this is, uh, 
uh, the growth without BPH history. If you activate the coupling and you have BPH history, and so you have the stresses generated by uh, the mechanical part and the, and the fact that, the, that due to BPH, the, the prostate is larger, you see this is the growth, the tumor growth. You see it's, it's very much reduced and these results were published on PNAS and attracted a very, very good deal of interest from medical doctors. And they want to mention that now we are trying to work more along these lines. And uh, for example, I discussed uh, with, I, I, have see, I have sent this paper to uh, one of the most uh, famous uh, prostate experts in Italy, uh, that is uh, Francesco Montorsi, Professor Francesco Montorsi, uh, that is a, a highly cited medical doctor. And he was super interested in these results and we are starting analyzing their data to try to give, uh, to, to really support this hypothesis that is, uh, is looks very interesting and, uh, and like being able to open new doors uh, in uh, understanding tumor growth. And again, here I would like to mention the, uh, what was said in a completely different context uh, by Ellen Kuhl today that gave a very nice plenary lecture. And uh, she uh, was saying that this field, the field of uh, biomedical applications is a field that is uh, going to be very, very important for, for us because we can put together a lot of things, a lot of knowledge, simulation, mathematics, mechanics, uh, and the capability of dealing with a lot of data and uh, also putting statistics and so on to give uh, new interpretations and to really help doctors. We are able to talk to doctors. It's just a matter of uh, start, uh, starting showing them our results, trying to spend some time trying to get uh, the, you know, a common, a common language. But at the end of the day, I think these are collaborations that are really fruitful. So from a tool that we, this opened also the door to studies on the effect of therapies. And uh, late and uh, in the last time with the collaboration, with collaborators both from Spain and also with mathematicians from Italy, we started developing, uh, uh, coupling our mechanistic modeling, modeling for uh, uh, personalized prediction of ra uh, radiation therapy outcome or other, other things like this optimal control of uh, anti-angiogenic therapies and all of these kind of things can be really inserted in these models uh, uh, to really see what are their effects and study uh, how therapies can uh, help in, uh, in uh, reducing, for example, the, the tumor growth. And uh, with this, uh, I, I would like really to thank you very much for your attention. I would like to say that, of course, I'm available for questions, not for a long time, because then I have to run uh, to the IGA mini symposium because I have to chair a session. But if you need to discuss something like this, something uh, I've shown, you are most welcome to send me an email or try to set up a Zoom call. I'm very happy to collaborate. Really, uh, isogeometric analysis uh, looks uh, to be a very good uh, method for solving a couple problems, structural problems, FSI problems, uh, and, uh, and these are some of the results I got recently. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ali, can you hear me? Yes, yes, very well. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you very much for this uh, very, you know, great and inspiring presentation. Certainly, um, you know, having been at the beginning of IGA development and being an active researcher in this, it's really great to see that the field is flourishing. And I think it's mostly due to researchers like you and the results that you're presenting. Um, let's see, while we wait for some questions to, to trickle in, let me kick off the the discussion. Um, I was I was intrigued with your topology optimization work. Okay, and um, you know I had a chance to talk to you know many people working in topology optimization. Kind of a hot area it has been a hot area for probably the last maybe a little bit less than a uh, than a decade, right? And you typically see efforts. Um, you know you have a density based formulation or a level set based formulation, and, and things kind of uh, take place on a 
on a background grid, which is usually structured. And you know, people don't usually go beyond linear hexes for, for something like this, right? Um, there's great work also by um, Thomas Zygmunt on this, and he's really uh, doing a lot of topology optimization, very complex, you know, aircraft structures. And it was always my opinion that you know, bringing IGA, especially perhaps to the level set-based approach, right, would really benefit that application. What are your experiences? Can you comment uh, quantitatively on that? Well, yes, I, I have to tell you, first of all, why I started working on that is just because here we have this big project on uh, additive manufacturing and we thought it was a very good connection. And then uh, I, I agree with you. This is something I always uh, would have liked to do. And we took advantage of the fact that, you know, we have a very strong connection with the mathematicians here. And, uh, and uh, really, we, we started working what I've shown you is uh, based on phase field, is phase field uh, topology optimization, that because it was something simple to start with, this is something we, we know how to do. And I have to tell you that even they are going higher order and high continuity really helped a lot. Uh, we have still, uh, we still need to work on that. Level set is a very good suggestion. Of course, this is more classical, but even there I, I expect some advantages. This is something we started very recently, but I think it's very promising. So I fully agree with you. Right. It seems to me any, you know, we looked at things like, you know, free surface flows, right? And face. Everywhere you, you're doing distance functions and, you know, there are challenges associated with that. It looks like smooth discretizations are much better for those. Exactly. And, uh, and much, much more robust. This is very important. Right. And uh, and I agree with you. This is my personal experience. I have no math theory behind that so far, but uh, the results are extremely good. And uh, and I agree with you. Level set wherever we have a distance function, uh, I think that really higher order high continuity and smoothing the gradients is really helping a lot. This is my personal experience. So I share your point of view. Great, great. Um, so Ali, you've been a um sort of a, a long-term proponent of collocation type methods in, in IGA and again sort of taking advantage of, of, of the continuity and you know for uh, you know certain classes of applications you can get really fast uh, you can get really fast methods can you talk a little bit about what you see the future of collocation methods in IGA well I tell you uh, honestly we started with that you remember well we discussed this a lot because uh, quadrature was costing too much. Mm -hmm. Now we are having very good alternatives uh, for IGA, uh, for getting uh, fast and cheap quadrature rules. So from a certain point of view, you know, collocation uh, as uh, just uh, a way to avoid quadrature may become less interesting because you know that there are some issues in some situations. Mm -hmm. Still, uh, I, I found it uh, very good recently in couple problems, because they are, the advantage is that you can couple the problem in much less points, in the collocation points. And this is really super helpful. Uh, the work we are developing now, for example, for electrophysiology, there we got a huge uh, boost by using collocation for, uh, for coupling, for example, the electrical field, the mechanics, uh, instead of Gauss points that are in any case, a lot, even if they are fast, directly at the collocation points using a strong form. I really see a couple of problems as a, as a very good uh, point for collocation and structural elements, because collocation seems to be particularly good for avoiding shear locking or things like that. Right. The structural elements in particular, I would say beams. I've seen a lot of extremely good work by, for example, Enzo Marino, uh, Laura De Laurentiis, Joseph Kindle, Oliver Weger, using uh, collocation for nonlinear beams with contact with a lot of things and uh, extremely good results. I think these are the most uh, uh, good applications for the future, the better application for the future, in my opinion. I see. Okay, very good. And maybe in, 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 in closing, um, what are the um, what are the next big steps? What are the next big projects for you when it comes to developing IGA or applying IGA? What's on your mind? Well, 
as I told you, I'm, uh, well, first of all, a good answer would be the next one I'm going to set up with you, probably. <laughs> no, but uh, jokes aside, uh, I, I think that uh, going, uh, what I'm doing uh, with uh, Tom, Hector, and Guillermo Lorenzo mm -hmm. for tumor growth uh, is something that is very inspiring for me. I'm learning a lot, and I think there there is uh, a lot of potential on one side. On the other side, this work on electrophysiology is really uh, very inspiring for me. I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm really at the beginning, but I see a lot of potential there. These are probably the, the two applications I will spend most time on uh, in the next years. Okay, Ale, thank you very much. I think this is all the time we have for this uh, semi-plenary lecture. As Ali mentioned, um, another installment of an IGA symposium is starting in, in 10 minutes. So we invite everyone in the, in the audience to, to attend that one. And this way you get to spend another hour and 40 minutes with Ali chairing this, um, chairing this session. So we thank you very thank much for attending. Thank you, Ali, for giving this great talk. I would like to thank everyone for attending and I would like to thank you, Yuri, for uh, your friendship and for being such a fantastic chairman. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye.